Hey guys, this is Mikro. I am doing a pretty niche video for most people this time. I'm doing a, a video on how to repair in a war. I, I realized that this role comes down to usually two to four people per company per war on like 10 or 11 defenses. So it's not super common. But that being said, I don't see anyone that talks about this, and it's kind of an interesting topic for people to know about anyways, and know how to help people that are repairing. So I would figure I'd make a video, because if people play around how, you, like, repairers, then it will make your life on defense a lot easier, and it allows you to be put in spots where you don't really have to do too much to win, because you're just winning off of your repair team, which is great, especially for wars where... You have some people that are absent and something always seems to go wrong and then you're stuck in a spot where they get in a fort with 20 minutes and you need to pull a miracle out to win. And that's when having good repairs on your team is very valuable and why it is a very sought after position for people that are good at them. I've been doing repairs for a, a decent amount of time for a variety of companies. Stonegard or Dropouts I did repairs for on West and East for a while. I do repairs on less now just for murking because I'm known to be like consistently good with them. And I was probably the first person on West Coast and one of the first people on East Coast to really start abusing horns, which turned this whole uh, attack strategy into a... It's not the hard part. The hard part of attack now is not actually getting the points, but it's actually winning in four. And I might have been the person that started that as far as I know. Because uh, the... the in terms of how many horns were blown and how many people were actually destroying horns before. That seems like something I might have caused. So, anyways, getting to like a basic map here, the one thing that is good to know right off the bat is when you get into to fort, your gates flip sides with the points. So C gate is A point, B gate is B, A is C, which doesn't really make any sense. And it confuses everybody. Um, you could either call things like, oh, I want to defend a gate side, or hey, I want to defend a or C point side, and that means the same thing. And it confuses everyone that's new to a war, but you just have to really look at what you're calling. Because if you get that mixed up, you could have people end up, ended up on the wrong side of the fort defense, and that could be very, very bad. But as a repairer yourself, if you're doing these, they have two siege by windows. One's between, or one's on C gate, basically, and then one is on A gate. And those are where you get your repair parts from, which allow you to do some pretty fun things. So in terms of the repair parts themselves, at a basic level, you'll start off every war with 300 spawned in there immediately. So you want to grab both of those. So if you want to be a super efficient, you have one person on C gate and you have one person on A gate and you're a repair team and you work together to do the repairs. I have seen instances of companies doing like between four and six people repairing, which sounds very weird and it won't make a lot of sense to most people. But if people are actually good at that, then it allows them to repair four to six times as fast in a particular gate, right? And they can only shoot one person and stop the repairs by hitting one person at a time. So it's actually like kind of a benefit, but then you also start off the wars a little bit slower because you have less people that are going to be jumping off the, the fort immediately because they're getting repair parts. So there's like a plus and minus there, but that's a, a strategy that I don't see implemented very often and definitely is helpful because you need less time to actually get those gates up. So in terms of repairing every, each one of these gates and like what options you have to do with these repair parts, so you're going to be getting 600 off the start if you include both of these, and then you're getting 600 off the start if you include both of these every 10 minutes. So if they get in the fort with, in 20 minutes, then you have 120, uh, 100, yeah, 100, 1,200 repair parts for the war, assuming they break the shops right away, which they probably won't. But those still keep joining when they're broken and when you get those shops when they get repaired they'll they'll be there and those shops repair at about a rate of two percent every five seconds so it takes about five minutes per shop or per uh repair part station so those do come up naturally but it does take time they you could also additionally repair those for 100 parts total per shop which is worth it at times especially when it comes to cleanse buys because if your army doesn't have cleanse and the attackers have cleanse, then you often will lose. 
So communicating these cleanse buys is very, very important. It's something I usually would calm in a global chat if I had access to that in a, an army discord. Or I would be typing it in army chat and I'd be like, hey, the, the cleanse buy station on A is up. Come to A if you want your cleanse buys. And then I'll usually keep re consistently repairing about the same the same one in the same spot. Unless the attackers like figure out I'm doing that and abuse me. Uh, and the reason why I do that is just so people are more like it's more natural than like if I repair this single one four times in a row, then people are like, okay, that we just won this fight. I should he head over there because Mikro is probably going to repair the the station. So that's something that helps them out a bit. So the, and then if you have your your gates here, A gate, C gate, D gate, and E gate, which I do not have an icon for, unfortunately, with this raid planner. Uh, those cost about a hundred. 20 repair parts each. The back gates, I think, are a little bit less useful, but this is like, uh, it depends on who you're talking to. It, there's an argument to repair the back gates, and it, it's because you keep everyone in front of you. I don't think many people actually run through the back gates. I don't find repairing those to be as useful. And the people that are in charge of going to the back gate and getting through there at a certain point in the war, they'll just cut in through A or C anyway. So repairing the back gates isn't like it's useful at the beginning of the war. But then as the, the war drags on, it's less useful, so I don't find it to usually be worth it. And then you have the B-Gate, which is a hefty 220 repair parts, but you have to keep in mind that these repair parts are also, like, it takes longer to break B-Gate than it does to t break A-Gate and C-Gate, because B has more, like, repair stuff in there. So that's useful especially if you're trying to save a gate like b gate is a really good gate to repair because you have a longer time that you get to hold that before it breaks i'm going to talk about some like basic repair techniques between these gates and then i'll go into some advanced ones and then after that i'll jump into a vod where i did a very good job repairing and saved the defense of company the the war about three or four times so the basic repair techniques Basically, as they push in through a gate, you want to jump down behind them and you want to hit the repair button, which I believe is E. And then from there, that will tick up and the gate will be repaired after some time. Uh, that is not usually that easy because there will usually be people over here that are tasked to shoot you when you're repairing. But there are some companies that will just let you do this. And if they just let you do that, it's a great way to carry a war and you don't have to work that hard. You want to global calm these quen shops, which I already talked about. I'd say early on when they break through, like say if they cap this point last C point and they run to A gate, then I would be trying to hold your your parts as much as possible and not just waste them trying to repair A gate. The reason, unless you're actually winning the fight on A gate. Uh, the reason why I say this is because if you spend a bunch of parts repairing A gate and it breaks in 30 seconds anyway, then those parts are kind of useless and it's not as useful as they would be later on. So I find using those parts early is not as useful anymore. There is an exception to this where if your army is playing really, really aggro and they are winning the fight outside the, the gate and you have like all these horn buffs going on and people are actually dying relatively fast and or the attackers aren't actually hitting the gates, then actually repairing that gate is very good because it will allow your army to have that advantage position outside the fort before the, the horns are down. So they constantly have that... 22.5% absorb damage absorption buff and the 500 health per second buff. And you can constantly spam that, which allows you to win those fights better. Most people will ignore people that jump off and they'll just go straight for the gate. So it's a lot less useful, I'd say, but it is a technique that you can do versus the right opponent. And then the way that I would use these normally as I would let A gate, C gate, D gate, and E gate kind of all go down, but then I would dump all my parts into B gate and repairing. And the reason why I do that is most companies won't actually push in until all these gates are down. So if you have B gate last, that gate will take the longest to go down because it has 220 parts maximum in there. And then it also has a lot of horns angled along it versus A and C have a little bit less. And it's a lot easier to defend B than it is to defend A and C because of the way the fort spawns work. So I find repairing B to be overall pretty effective. You have to be careful sometimes because if they crash in through A and C and you're still repairing B, then they can catch you from behind and wipe you and or your army, and that's possible to lose a war from that. I've not seen it happen yet, but it is a possibility that you have to be aware of.
I'd say blow horns constantly if you're a pair and you're not really doing anything because you're gonna be up on the walls anyway, looking to jump behind people and getting that sneaky repair off because you're basically playing like a rat. And then I wouldn't let the people get in the back gates for free at the start of the fort phase because if they get in for free, then they'll be shooting you in the back while you're looking to do the repairs and that can be very annoying. So that's more of a army macro thing. Uh, some advanced repair techniques that I've seen to be useful. Uh, if you have a dex group and there's a way to communicate to them that, hey, I want to clear the healer standing outside of B so that I can repair B and the healers won't shoot me. If you can communicate that, that is a really easy way to carry a war. And there's a few companies on the West Coast I see to do that all the time. On the East Coast, I see it's a little bit less common for some reason, but that is definitely a, a technique that is very effective and very hard to punish. Because if you have a dex player that's supposed to shoot anyone that's repairing the gate, and they're getting killed by the other team's dex, then you can't really do anything. So it ends up being like the only way to stop them are people inside the fort, basically. And that's uh, very difficult and takes a lot of game sense to realize that pe people inside the fort attacking actually have to turn around behind them and shoot the repair guy while they're trying to cap. Body blocking repairs is a really big technique, especially if you have a couple repair people and you're like in a call and you you know each other. Then it's like one person's repairing, the other one's body blocking them so they can't shoot them from the outside. You can do that as well as shoot preventing them from being shot on the inside. It's just like a, a game sense thing. You get a, if you have multiple people, you can repair these gates faster, which I talked about earlier. Uh, if you repair these repair shops, you actually can sometimes get more re repair parts out of the shops than it does take to put into them to repair them up which nets you more parts which lets you repair more gates and it makes makes the job a little bit easier and then i'd say prioritizing these front cleanse by stations when you're repairing cleanse by stations a little bit better than the back ones because the back ones like naturally go down and people are catching those respawns but for some reason people don't camp the front respawns as well or i find those to last a little bit longer versus more companies but it's a bit situational, and in general, the cleanse buys will not be up for the majority of the war. Alright, I'm going to jump into the gameplay segment where we had a 15-minute fort defense. I'm probably going to speed this up a little bit because I would say that there's not too much to talk about for a while. But then when there, there's plays being made, I'll slow it down. So if we lose B as our last point, we're not in a, a great position. I'm just out here trying to prevent people from getting in as soon as possible, Then, but then I'm also kind of rushing back because I know I have to get my my siege parts and I need to get my cleanse buys in before all those all go down when people break in. So I rush over here, get my cleanse buy, get, get some haste, grab my parts. I'm the only person repairing this for us. It's a little bit different. They rush in B gate right off the bat. So normally people rush the first gate they get to, but it's usually A or C, but they're rushing through B, but I actually commit the parts to repair B because it's so big. And we have this like big defender's advantage here on this B repair. So you, you see that it takes, my, it takes my parts when I repair this, it goes up. I can actually be shot through the gate, which is really annoying. And it's a glitch that currently exists. So you can angle yourself off to a side of it. So you're less likely to be hit from the melees, I believe hit through it. And I'm just elongating this B fight as much as possible. So that my army has time to respawn, get back, and defend this. Normally, I wouldn't do this before I... Like, if I get to, I'd say, 500 parts, I would stop doing this immediately. And I would try to hold them for cleanse buys or repairing the, the gate later. Sometimes I break that rule if we're, like, really winning it. But, like, right now, I'm kind of wasting parts. I'm just, like, trying to buy time, hoping that we'll recontest it. But I'm not really sure if we'll actually be able to. And this happens for a bit. At this point, it's like, this is not winnable. This is gates going down. I wasted probably two to three hundred parts there trying to repair a gate that was already lost. And then they crash in through B. And then they're crashing in through A and C at the same time here. So I'm just going to get the last parts I can before those stations go down. And now I'm trying to save A gate because I realize that they're not putting a lot of pressure on A gate. I'm checking the, the back gates as much as possible as well, just to have eyes on them, because once those go up, I'll start getting hit from behind as I'm doing repairs, which is very annoying, but there's not much you could do about it. So now I'm like trying to clear our cleanse by stations, but I realize it's kind of hopeless. Those guys are in through the back gates at this point. So my entire goal at this point is to save A gate. I'm trying to save A gate because I realize that this is the... 
if I've saved this gate, then th their army probably won't all in on the fort until this gate's down, so it buys us more time. And I'm trying to shorten this amount of time in the fort as possible, so that we have more time to get the, the cleanses in, which are at this point about to break, and the, the repair shops, which help overall win the war. They've already broken most of the horns, so I can't really break those at this point. This is the jumping down behind them and looking to repair technique I talk about. You see it's very heavily contested, so it's very unlikely I get those, and those gates could actually be broken even though I'm repairing them and the gate isn't fully up if they shoot the, the sides of the posts on the gate. So this kind of is a waste of parts, but I don't think it's that bad. I still have a decent amount of parts, I still have 400 parts, but I'm the only repair person for this war, which is another disadvantage, because no one else uh, was doing it with me. I'm not really looking to repair the coin shops this early because I think people still have enough cleanses and I don't want to waste parts repairing the shops when it's not actually needed because when those go down, it will take a very long time. So now I'm seeing that we're like kind of winning this B fight and I'm trying to get the repair up on B gate to buy us more time. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get it at this point. It's very, very close. Other team is rushing in. I realize that I probably can't get this. See, they're crashing behind us, and now at this point, I'm just playing life. I'm like worried that they're gonna be able to crash in through here through B because they caught us up from behind and just win the war. So now, I, because I have a heavy build on, I'm just playing on point. I'll do this for a bit until I realize I could slip through and maybe get a repair off, which I see they have no one stationed behind B, so the repair is free, and I sneak one off here in a second. So this just allows us to clear everyone in fort because we got the B gate up and buys us more time. Now I'm like just checking all my part stations. This is that repairing a part station to get more parts back technique I talked about earlier. And now I'm repairing this gate. And you'll see I'll put in chat here in a second that this is up. I'll put front left cleanse, pot, or front left cleanse stations up. And then I'll say C, C gate. And the reason why I do that is so my army knows to go there. And you see people rush over there. They're getting their cleanses. Because people realize that those are like kind of rare to get up. And I see that they're not fully breaking B-gate, but I'm getting shot from behind, so I'm not going to be able to repair that, so I just let that go, even though there's a, there's also a K going off there, so it's very, very difficult to actually save. I'm doing that repair the station to get more cleanse, or to get more siege parts back, so I can repair more gates later. And those will still generate while they're breaking, which is nice. It's just a, a timing thing where I, I don't want to run back there and it to be fully broken. And I'd have to waste more parts to get those off. I'd rather just take the, the little bit of loss of parts right now and just get them immediately. See, I'm not doing stuff for a lot of this. I'm just kind of running around, checking if I can hop down behind and get those repairs off. But then when there's a fight that actually breaks out that's important I'm in, if we want to win the war, then I'll be in it. Like right now, there's pressure on B. I'll be in that fight on B. I don't want to be caught out repairing the gate when we're in a fight that if I'm not there, we could lose. So there's like a, a balancing act there as well, and it depends on what role you're playing. Some people can get value even though they're repairing, and they can do that. But as a deadly point player, it's very difficult, and I have to like balance that. But the nice part about being deadly point is I won't just randomly die with the, all the parts. Like I very rarely die with all the parts, which means that I could always make plays. At this point, I see that everyone's running up top, and I'm just trying to... I'm playing defense, basically. I'm not actually playing as a repair person. I'm just trying to help clear the people up top. Not really able to do that, and I believe I die here. Yeah, so I die, force Fane off, killed a few people up top. Doesn't matter a ton at the end of the day. After this, you'll see a, a few more spots where I do some better plays. So I see that they're... They're regrouping up top. People who typically regroup up top and then they'll jump down together and they'll crash a point, which gives me an opportunity to get a repair in. So I see now that they're jumping down to B. So I'm going to try to defend this B gate as much as possible, as well as I'm looking to see if I can get that repair off on B gate. There's not really a great opening yet, but I'm still like entertaining the idea of playing there, so I'm just like kind of controlling that zone. Still have to play on point because I'm a deadly point and there are a lot of people here and the point is ticking very, very fast. This gets very, very scary if I remember correctly. And I will even put this on 0.25 times in a second so you can see how close this war was. 
So if you see this right now, this gets to about 99%. Now maybe I'll speed that up a little bit. This gets to 99%. Uh, it's actually fine, 2.25. You see how close this war gets, and then all of a sudden all the nades I drop on point just wipe, like, 5 to 10 people. You can see all those bars. Those bars are the ones I hit with nades, and you see all the numbers go off. And then you see all the bodies in a second, and we won off of that, which is just crazy at the time. So this is why you don't just go to the repair stations when every time, even though it would be op uh, an option, because if I wasn't here, we lost the war. And you see my entire group is wiped, my healers are wiped. I, ha I have I have one healer left, and he's my group healer. My AoE is wiped, all, all my other deadly point players are wiped. I had to make this play in order to win the floor, to war. Yep, people freaking out on camera that we won that. We've got to go next immediately. I'm getting those repair parts. I'm looking to repair B as fast as I can because I know they're wiped, and this is a great opportunity. I have people up here trying to body block for me immediately because pe people in my army realize what I'm doing. I don't believe I'm able to get this one off, but I'm able to get it fairly close. Wait, did I actually get this one off? There's no way to let me get this one off. Yeah, there's melee here. I'm not getting this one off. But I, I get it very close, and then this also sets me up in a spot where later I could easily repair that V-gate and don't have to worry about it as much. Mm -hmm. At this point, it's been a decent amount of time, and I realize I have to get those cleanse shops up so my melee can have those cleanses. So I say A-side cleanses up, and I get those parts because that's the A-gate. So I say A-side cleanses up, even though it's C-point. And then I jump down here immediately, realize I get the B-gate up. I know there's people outside of there, but it's worth getting the B-gate up, in my opinion, and letting those people die, because that just prevents them from crashing through B. They have to crash through A and C, and it puts us in a better spot on defense. Immediately, I'm repairing this gate, and I'm letting the people out there either die or contest that. I'm getting shot from behind. There's a lot of pressure behind. It gets scary here for a second, because I thought we were going to not be able to get to the point in time, but we were able to get there, wipe that up. And I'm, I'm back here just trying to repair B, but I'm not actually able to get there to B because I'm getting shot in the back. So I, I let that B gate go down, but it bought us a decent amount of time to clear up these people in fort before they could have a clean push. Because of that, they have to run up top. And they run up top and regrouping. They're looking to do a push. I'm looking off the side here to see if I can jump down behind and get a repair off. There's not really that option, so I'm just trying to zone some of the, the areas. See, that would take a lot of parts to get up, so it's not really worth it at the moment. And then I'm going to immediately hop over here to try to prevent I'm them down. from rushing through B. Respawn. At this point, there's 2 minutes 50 seconds. I know there's 2 to 3 respawns left in a war. Which means that if I get a repair off, we win. And that would be ideal. There's not really a good opening, and I don't have decks that I, I trust to clear out that backside in this war. So I'm just left here playing on point, playing my life. Kind of struggling for a bit, but living. It's the life of a deadly point player. And then I realize that there's this little opening back here on B, and in a second I'll, I'll go for that. But I, I don't want to. I want to make sure that they they are contested here as well. So I'm gonna clear out these healers as much as I can. I'm just putting pressure on them, trying to zone them back. Now they're in a spot where they're far enough back where they'd shoot me if I go for the repair. But I'll start going for it anyway, just to try to. Single my team to push up and body block for me, which they do immediately. I'm not able to get this off, but I'm able to, to start that repair. And then we have all those people there. And then a lot of people don't look behind them in wars. They tend to tunnel vision on what's in front of them, which is why I'll head up top. And then I'll look to see if I can get that repair off behind. I just realized that this one's really close. It's glitched. I could actually get the parts, even though it's broken. Whatever. I jump down here behind, realize that those healers got angsty and pushed in too far they're not turning around to heal me they're to hit me so i'm able to get this final repair up before the last response which you see happening right there and all those people out there they cannot get in we just have the white people here and then we win the war so that's like the power of like being a a good repair person or what happens if they're not really teching against you and putting decks outside there and if they put decks outside there then those decks won't be shooting your healers in the, war, in the fort which means your healers will live longer so either way makes you a very good asset in a war on defense to use as repair parts so I got like four gates up that war, repaired a bunch of gates to max, a few cleanse stations 
and no. you see that I got I get 16 even though I have not very good stats in a war because I was doing that much with uh, the repairs. Well, I still get top assist as a repair person, which doesn't really make any sense, but that happens sometimes, I guess. And yeah, so overall, if I were to summarize this, just make sure that you get those parts as much as possible. Try to hop behind them, get those repairs up. Ideally, if you have teammates that can clear out the people that are standing back here with you, that will help, and then have people body blocked for you while you're getting the repairs. And that's it, guys, for this kind of special or kind of more niche build, but I hope to see you guys in the next video.